Hello, um, I do apologise if you tried joining a few moments ago, it appears the microphone did not wish to work. It now does want to work and I changed the batteries and everything is grand again. Um, so as I was saying, um, it's been quite some time since uh, I was last able to pray with you and I do apologise that uh, life got a little bit hectic. But it's good that we could be here this evening to pray and give thanks to God uh, despite the heat. Um, so today the church is remembering St Alban. Uh, who is the uh, known as the first uh, martyr of Britain, and he died around the year um, 250. So uh, this is the information we have, the hagiography, or the, is, which is a kind of a biography of a saint, comes from the Venerable Bede, uh, who wrote an ecclesiastical history of the English people, um, so a, a few years later, a few centuries later on. And in it he recalls uh, the, uh, a man called um, Alban, uh, who becomes St Alban, and um, he lived in... Um, uh, uh, Verm Vermilion, uh, which is uh, obviously near to uh, modern day St Albans, and um, this is during a time when Christians were being persecuted and were being uh, uh, for for being Christian and actually converting people away from the pagan gods. And so the story goes that there was a priest who was being pursued by Roman soldiers, and Alban took him in um, and uh, and hid him. And so the um, and uh, the uh, the priest. Um, sort of spoke to Alban and convinced him to become Christian. He got baptised, and when the soldiers came looking for the the priest, um, Alban dressed in the priest's cloaks and clothing and presented himself to the soldiers in um, in the place of his guest. Alban was brought before a judge um, who um, uh, who sent him initially to be scourged because he refused to accept the pagan gods. Um, when he um, when this happened, then um, Alban. Uh, did, said he was willing to die uh, for the one true God, uh, he was sentenced to be executed by beheading. And so he was going to be taken to a place of execution uh, that had to cross the river there, uh, but the bridge was filled with mob and with the mob and onlookers uh, all wanting to have a fun day out watching the execution, and so they could not cross. Uh, the river was too deep to cross um, and too dangerous, but apparently Alban looked at the heavens and uh, it uh, came to pass that the waters dried up and they could cross over. One executioner at this point threw down the sword and refused to do so, falling on his knees at Alban's feet, um, because he had wanted no, nothing to do with uh, killing this holy man. So eventually he does get uh, taken um, up uh, across the river and up the hill, um, and it is said that uh, um, that uh, the uh, it was said that when Alban got there, he said that he was thirsty and he prayed to God that he had to give him water, and a spring immediately sp um, sprang up at his feet. Uh, and it said that once um, the his head was chopped off, um, so uh, so yes yeah, so uh, yes yeah, so once his head was sorry it was was there and that his head was struck off as well as the head of the first Roman soldier who had been converted and refused to execute him. However, immediately after delivering the fatal stroke, the eyes of the second executioner popped out of his head and dropped to the ground along with St Alban's head. Uh, so the second executioner could not uh, uh, rejoice over Alban's death either. Um, and then uh, there's other legends which suggest that Alban's head rolled down the hill uh, after his execution and a well sprang up where it stopped. Uh, and upon uh, hearing the, the miracle, the astonished judge ordered no further persecutions and that he honoured the saint's death. Uh, so a shrine was, um, brought, was founded, which is now where the Cathedral of St Alban's is. Um, and he became one of the, kind of, he was the first martyr to, of Christianity uh, in England. So... He's got uh, pat uh, he's the patron saint of converts, refugees, and torture victims, which is very apt considering that we have got uh, um, all that is going on with uh, uh, with e uh, the Ukraine at the moment, and we will remember him in our prayers. So as we come together, let us give thanks for the day that has been. Let us pray to God and let us give thanks for all that He has done for us. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night, to be praised and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence, by the light of Christ your living word, to spell the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light, and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried out to my God for help, he heard my cry in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him. 
dark waters and thick clouds of pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds, burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people, and bring, them, bring, and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray of one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this evening is part of Psalm 119. My delight shall be in your commandments. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with my whole heart. Lead me to the path of your commandments, for therein is my delight. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and do not uh, and not to unjust gain. Turn away my eyes, lest they gaze on vanities. O oh, give my life in your in O oh, give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which stands for all who fear you. Turn away the reproach which is, is which I dread, because of your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness give me life. Let your faithful love come unto me, O Lord, even your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I answer those who taunt me, for my trust is in your word. O oh, take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. So shall I always keep your law. I shall keep it for ever and ever. I will walk at liberty, because I study your commandments. I will tell of your testimonies, even before kings, and will not be ashamed. My delight shall be in your commandments, which I have greatly loved. My hands will I lift up to your commandments, which I love and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember your word to your servants, on which you have built my hope. This is my comfort in my trouble, that you, you, your, your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, and that I have, turned, that I have not turned aside from your law. I have remembered your everlasting judgments, O Lord, and have been comforted. I am seized with indignation at the wicked, for they have forsaken your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me, in your house of pilgrimage. I have thought on your name in the night, O Lord, and so have kept your law. These blessings have been mine, for I have kept your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. My delight shall be in your commandments. Old Testament reading is a continuation of the second book of Chronicles, chapter 34, verses 19 to the end of the chapter. When the hit king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded uh, Hilkiah, um, Hakim, a son of Shaphan, uh, Abdon, son of Micha, the secretary of Shaphan, and the king's servant Asa, uh, Ashiah, Go inquire the Lord for me and those who are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that, is, that has been found. For the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us is great, because our ancestors did not keep the word of the Lord, to act in accordance with all that is written in this book. So Hilkah and those whom the king had sent uh, went to the prophet Huldah, the, son, uh, the wife of Shalom, son of Tothkah, uh, son of Hashran, keeper of the wardrobe, who lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter. And he spoke to her in the, uh, to, to that effect. She declared to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, I will indeed bring disaster upon this place and upon its inhabitants. All the curses that are written in the book that was read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and have made offerings to other gods, so that they have, been, have provoked me to anger with all the works of their hands. My wrath will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. But as to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the, king, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was penitent and you humbled yourself before God, that when you heard his words against this place and its inhabitants, 
and you shall have humbled yourself before me, and have torn your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. I will gain you uh, to your ancestors, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes shall not look at, or not see all the disaster I will bring on this place and its inhabitants. They took the message back to the king. Then the king sent word and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people, both great and small. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. The king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord, keep his commandments, his decrees and his statutes with his heart, soul and, and to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Judah and in Benjamin pledge themselves to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem acted according to the covenant of God, the God of their ancestors. Josiah took away all the abominations from all the territories that belonged to the people of Israel and made all who were in Israel worship the Lord their God. In all the days they did not turn away from following the Lord their God of their ancestors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Our New Testament reading is continuation of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by flesh, could not do. By sending his own sign in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, uh, he, could, uh, he, con he condemned sin in the flesh, and so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds up on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, all, uh, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and ask me to see me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and ask me to receive me glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and ask me to receive me glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and ask me to receive me glory. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and fallen the way rejoice with God now and forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Those who give up their lives to Christ and fall in the way, rejoice with God now and forever. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray and give thanks for the day that has been. We thank you for the example of your servant St. Alban, for his steadfast faith when faced with danger, 
for protecting those who are weak, for coming to the aid of those in need. Help us always to be defending of those who are in need of our help. Help us, Lord, to do the right thing, even at the, our own expense. Help us to do what is expected of us and what we would hope would be done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all who are suffering because of the fighting, for all who have lost their homes, for all who are anxious to return to their homes. We pray for refugees and asylum seekers and those who are seeking sanctuary in this country. May we treat them with the kindness and respect which they deserve. May we recognise them as your children and treat them how we would wish to be treated ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all victims of crime, for those who have had their personal space violated, for those who are recovering from injury, for those who have suffered from loss. We pray too for those who perpetrate crime, for those who feel such desperation, for those who carry such anger. Lord, be with all who are in need. Give peace to those who require it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are struggling at this time. We pray especially for those who are in need of support through the food bank, the fuel bank, for those who are anxious about the rise in inflation. <coughs> we pray, Lord, that you would watch over all who are in need and help us to share the abundance which we have with those who have less. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray especially by name for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Mary, Tina, Robert, David, Peter, Rose, Sarah, Gwenna, Gillian, Brian, Chris, B, and Pamela. We pray too for those who are known to you alone, Lord, for all who suffer in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are reached the end of their lives and all who recently lost their lives. We pray especially by name for Bill, and we pray for all who are in need of comfort in this time of trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, when the gospel of Christ first came to our land, you, glorify, you gloriously confirmed the faith of Alban by making him the first to win a martyr's crown. Grant that, following his example in the fellowship of the saints, we may worship you, the living God, and give true witness to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. And so let us pray confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of God and the love, uh, sorry, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So please join me tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for morning prayer. Um, but we won't have evening prayer, I'm afraid, tomorrow. But uh, Friday we should have morning evening prayer, if I remember correctly. Um, but um, join us on Sunday at 8 a.m. for BCP Holy Communion. 9.30 will be at St Mary's um, and we will I'll rig up something to, for um, to stream the service. It may not be as you normally would receive it um, because the soundboard has decided to pack up and uh, is in waiting repairs. But we'll do something to make sure it does work. Um, and then uh, at 11 o'clock we'll be at St Thomas's uh, for the Eucharist there. And at half past six in the evening we will come together for Evensong at St Mary's and that will be lovely as well. But until we see each other again, God bless, stay safe and have a very good evening.